Welcome to the second of our series on uh, the parents video so that you can get a picture of what your child has been learning or what the lesson was for the fifth grade class at Mountain Park Church. And I want to give you a quick thumbnail sketch of what we're doing. I had promised the kids we could talk about anything they ask about and I would give them as much information as I possibly could. And so this Sunday there have been a lot of questions, a lot of very, very heavy questions. Um, what does it feel like to die? How do you understand what evil is in the world? Why does God let evil continue in the world? There were a lot of heavy questions and a lot of issues. Um, I feel like one of my fears is I'm afraid of dying. Well, yeah, what we did, we just stopped and said, okay, now, these are important issues. Let's talk about these things. And so if your child is getting to the point where you're hearing some questions, it's because they've been thinking about some of these issues. And um, it, it, that's why I want to try and share with you because uh, being a parent of fifth grader can be challenging. Maybe just a little bit more challenging than being the teacher in a fifth grade class. Okay, so in the month of February, we're working on the lesson on how we are supposed to love. And so here's the memory verse for February, so you can help your student. Here is what love is. This is the memory verse. Here is what love is. It is not that we love God, it is that He loved us and sent us His Son to give His life to pay for our sins. We find that in 1 John 4.10. Now what I told the kids, and this is uh, the, the memory slip that they get each week, um, love can be very challenging. Love is one of the most important things we have to do in our lives. And it's also one of the hardest things that we do. Um, love is not come naturally. Um, we have to learn how to do it. It is a learned skill. It is a learned ability. And when Jesus took his disciples um, into that upper room the last night of his life with them, and he commanded them to love, he actually took them backwards in their memory over the past three years and said, love as I have loved you. Okay, so it's a learned activity. I have shown you, I have given you the lessons on how to love. Now, you take my example and you put that into your own life, into your own personality, and you make the effort to become loving even as I have loved you. And on the surface it seems pretty simple, but what it means is putting aside your own thoughts, your own ideas of what you'd like to see happen, and figuring out, trying to learn what it means to meet the needs or the expectations or the desires or the reality of another. Okay? And here's the Bible verse that we used. It's a story of Mary and Martha in the Gospel of Luke. Uh, you can find uh, the story of Mary and Martha and Lazarus. It's the same two ladies uh, in the Gospel of John. Uh, when Lazarus, their brother, gets sick and Jesus comes and, and raises him from the dead. But this is a story of Mary and Martha as they get ready to prepare um, for a visit that Jesus made to them. Okay? As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where the woman named Martha opened her house to him. House to him. It was at the city of Bethany and it's about a two-mile a nice leisurely Sabbath day walk from Jerusalem and uh, so they had their home there at Bethany. She had a sister named Mary 
who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, Jesus answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, nor indeed only one thing. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Okay, now, you say, what does that have to do with love? How does that impact on love? Well, what I ask the students, this is what I'll ask you as well, do you think that that's the first time that a similar conversation had taken place between Mary and Martha? Now the students just got a real kick out of that because they, uh, uh, one person at the back of the class said, sibling rivalry! Yeah, they, this is not the first time this came up. These two sisters had grown up with each other every day of their lives. This is something that was somewhat normal for them. Then why did they get into squabbles back and forth rather than being partners or um, cooperating uh, loving individuals, why did that cause some problems? Well, uh, I told a story of, uh, from my own family uh, to the students. I'm not going to share that one with you. You can ask your student and he, he or she can give you the update on what we use that way. But I'm going to give you as a parent a little different picture. Uh, for instance, I had a grandmother and grandfather Wygent. Um, they were very special people and they taught me a great deal. But just like we can have people teach us how to love, and we can also have people who teach us how not to love, we have to accept that some people are just not good teachers on how to love. All right? My grandparents um, were married just before the big crash in 1929. They lost everything. They, they had two little baby girls at that point, uh, my, my mother and her older sister. Um, it was chaos, total chaos. He was a builder contractor and he lost everything, including uh, having appendicitis and just about dying at that point. Um, so there was a lot of stress in their life and a lot of stress in their marriage. And from the day that I became aware, these two very godly, very dedicated Christian people, Gideons, their entire business lives, adult lives, um, leaders in the church, dedicated followers of Christ, couldn't translate that, couldn't integrate that into a marriage relationship. And they stayed married all their whole lives, almost 50 years. But they screamed at each other in gigantic neck vain, throbbing screams, red-faced, hollering, never used any bad words, never did anything violent, it wasn't, you know, they, they just couldn't seem to see eye to eye. They, they were entertaining as it could be. Once you got to the point where you said, I've seen this happen so many times, it's just going to kind of, <laughs> you go with the flow, um, people from around the community would just come to sit and watch it. It was like a, a, a soap opera. <laughs> and you knew the plot line. 
you knew what was coming next. But as soon as they get into a disagreement, they go into one of these shouting matches. When it came time for me to get married, my grandfather took me in his pickup truck, as was common for us, and he said, Little, let me, let me tell you a few things you need to know about being married. And I went, um... <laughs> Grandpa, I love you and all of that, but I'm going to turn off my recording device in my head and I'm not going to pay any attention to you at all about that. Why? Because of all the things he could teach me, and he taught me a great deal, I had to find out how to be a loving husband someplace else. Why? Because love is hard. Love is really, really tough. And if we don't realize the challenge, if we don't figure out how to do what Jesus Christ put us into his family to do, we just spin our wheels and we just make a whole lot of noise and a lot of dust and we don't get anywhere. There are barriers to love, real, tangible barriers. One person sits on one side of this wall that we've built and the other person sits on the other side and we tend to just operate blindly thinking we know the other person and we just lob what we think is love over onto their side of the wall and all it does is upset them. It doesn't meet a need, doesn't, it doesn't say I love you, it actually hits them in the head and causes them to get upset. And then they do the same thing, lobbing back and forth these things that <laughs> were intended to be loving, but it turns out that it's the opposite. All right, why? Because we haven't removed the wall that's between us so that we can actually learn what the other person is like, what they need, what they want, what they're hungry for, what their deepest fears are, what, what drives them, what makes them who they are. Mary and Martha had a wall between them, all right? Uh, one was yelling, I, I think you're just lazy, Mary. I think you're just selfish, Mary. I think you don't care about the family, Mary. Mary, on the other hand, is yelling across the wall, Martha, you are just bossy. You're a perfectionist. You you don't really care about me, you just feel like you have this perfect idea of what we are supposed to be. And, and it just, they didn't understand. When Jesus said, Mary has chosen the better thing, what she was trying to say, well, Martha, you and Mary both ought to be sitting at my feet listening to my message, because your life would be much better, much more joyful, much more abundant if you learned how to love. Now my feeling is they both eventually did learn to do much better and to understand more about what the other one wanted and needed. They had different personalities, they had different ideas, they had different sets of gifts, gifts. they had different strengths and different weaknesses. Some of those things come by what we're given in our, you know, biological makeup, but the other part of it <coughs> can come from just silly things like our birth order. We can't change that. I was the oldest in my family. I have a younger brother and a younger sister. And I, I keep wanting to say as I get older and older, guys, I'm sorry I was the oldest one. I didn't mean to hurt you because I was the one old enough to be the bossy one. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just talk about what some of the barriers are. We talked about these in the class. Um, when we came to the point where we actually started talking about the barriers, I asked, what's the biggest one? 
Let me give you the list as we had assembled it on Sunday. The items that keep us from loving, keep us from really making the effort, taking the risk to love how God loves us, are fear and guilt, shame, and envy, our feeling of being inadequate, um, our um, feeling that somehow we are not as good as someone, so we have this sense of envy and anger, bitterness over something or other that's gone through in our lives. If you look at that list, you'll see almost every single relationship that we get drawn into can be hindered by items on this list, fear, guilt, envy, inadequacy. The items on this list keep us from loving. And if we don't confront them, we will live sort of in isolation. We may live on our side of the wall, but we'll never feel like we actually are in a loving relationship with other people. Um, it's like this. Jesus gave us the key to how to get past every one of these barriers. He wants us to have life. He said it's an abundant life. It's a life filled with joy and hope and love. So he gives us the keys to how to get past the barriers that keep us from loving. And I don't care what barrier it is. Uh, you know, I've had so many people come into my office for uh, counseling and, and talking about uh, their marriage and that kind of thing. And the anger, the resentment, the, the, the fear, the shame, the broken trusts that come along with us cause the people to sit on opposite ends of the room if you were given the chance. I don't give them the chance. I make them sit together. I make them hold hands as we talk. I uh, had one not too long ago that uh, she stuck out her hand and but it was almost like he had leprosy and she was afraid she might catch it. <laughs> they didn't talk very long before she got her hand right back. She didn't want any more than that than she just had to. See the barriers. Now, I'm going to jump forward now and say, once they learn what Jesus Christ taught us about how to love, how to be loving partners in a relationship. Now they don't have to encourage anybody to hold hands. They want to share. The barriers have come down. There isn't any barrier. There isn't any trust that has been broken. There is nothing that has ever happened in your past. There's nothing about who your personality is the way you have always been. There's nothing in your entire life that Jesus Christ cannot help you to manage in such a way that you can find a way to look at other people with hope, with encouragement, with genuine sensitivity, sometimes sympathy. You can't control what somebody else does in response. But one of the most important parts is the way you feel going into the relationship. Um, it is uh, well over 50% of the problem is the way we bring ourselves and our fears, our doubts, our shame, our guilt, our anger into the relationship that causes people to say, I got to protect myself from this and we build a wall up higher. I want to be people that help bring the walls that divide us down so that we can have a chance to really find out what Jesus Christ wanted us to do in being loving individuals. In the fifth grade class, 
we talked about how we can be God's people in a new way, realizing this was his greatest command. If you want to be my friends, you will love each other. You will obey my command to love each other. Not pretend. It's not pretend. It's not imaginary. It's real. But he has to give us the skills, the tools, in order to do it. So that's what we talked about this week in the fifth grade class. Uh, we talked about Mary and Martha. We talked about one of my family relationships. I give you my grandparents' experience. I want you to have a better life than they had. <laughs> I want you to live longer than they did. Too much stress in that way of life. I want you to realize how much God loves us in order to, be given, to give us a chance to be his kind of people. God bless you. Thank you for listening to these videos. Uh, the kids are going to ask a lot of questions. And if you ask them how things went in the class and how they talked about Mary and Martha, um, they, they should be able to give you an interesting account of what we talked about and then shared. And now you know a little bit about that. Uh, please understand, my desire is to help, to partner with you. If you have questions, give me a call. If you have things you wonder about, write me a note on an email. I'll put my email address down here at the bottom and, and you can uh, send me a little note and ask for more information if that would help. Okay? Thank you very much. We're praying for each of you. We're praying for each of the kids. And we're just so thankful we have a chance to share this way. God bless you.